Hi there, I'm meteorologist Mary Mays, and we have a lot of active weather to talk about. Tomorrow is going to be pretty busy. We've got a severe weather threat. We've got a lot of snow on the way, so let's go ahead and get right into it. Okay, guys, so this is the uh, North American model, and I'm just going to give you kind of an overview of how this system is going to set up. And I want you to keep your eyes on the four corners. Notice that spin there, low pressure develops. We can see some pretty heavy snow stretching from New Mexico into the Texas panhandle, and then things really start to wind up. You get that influx of Gulf moisture, so you got heavy snow on the cold side of the system and severe storms on the south side. So near the Gulf Coast is where you're going to see that potential for severe weather. And this system stretches northeast. You've got snow in the Midwest up into the interior northeast, mainly just rain along that I-95 corridor, but it's going to depend on where you're at exactly. And, and that's kind of the progression of this storm. So we're going to take a look at the two sides of the storm. We've got the wintry side producing that heavy snow, and then we have the severe side. And both are going to have some pretty big impacts, but it just depends on where you're at, where you see it. So let's get a close up of Texas and, you know, New Mexico. That is some heavy snow. Some folks are really going to be lucking out uh, around Amarillo, possibly around Albuquerque there, even some parts of West Texas seeing that heavy, heavy snow. Now notice the storms breaking out there in central Texas. And as we head into the afternoon, this really gets going on that, uh, let's see, this is two o'clock in the afternoon. Notice that things really get going along the Gulf Coast. And into the afternoon and evening, that's when those storms push through Louisiana into Mississippi. And at the same time, you've got the heavy snow stretching from you know Oklahoma, Kansas, into Arkansas, uh, into Missouri, Illinois. And that's the progression there. And we're gonna come back to this and talk a little bit more about the severe weather threat. But first, I do wanna focus on that winter weather threat. So here's a different view. And you can see that we've got that storm heading our way. So, you know, Missouri, Illinois, into, you know, Indiana, Ohio, into, uh, Michigan, you've got this snow spreading in, and then also into New York, into the Northeast, a lot of snow. But that pocket of warm air from the Gulf with all that moisture too, it's actually going to be really kind of carving into this storm and kind of getting sucked up. So some folks are going to see snow and then rain, which is a big mess. But that's something we're going to be watching for also around the Appalachians into you know Pennsylvania, into New York as well. So snow, <laughs> rain, we're really gonna have to watch this one. You see it kind of wrapping around that low there in that image. So that's kind of the snow side. Um, let's, actually, I do wanna take a look at snow totals before we get into the severe weather side. So I mentioned that some folks in you know Oklahoma, or not Oklahoma, into the Texas Panhandle and even Oklahoma Panhandle is going to get some good snowfall there, but New Mexico into the Texas Panhandle. Some folks are really going to, to look out. Now, I would say for most of you, you'll see about three to five inches. Some folks are going to get a lot more, seven, eight, even nine inches of snow. Then you'll see it four to five over much of Oklahoma. And then also into northern Arkansas, southern Missouri, into Illinois, you see a pretty narrow band of eight, nine inches. So, you know, the heaviest snow totals is really going to depend on the exact location. You know, one side of town in some areas might get a whole lot and the other side not as much because this is a pretty narrow band. But that's kind of what we're looking at. Some folks are really going to see this produce a pretty good chunk of snow. And in some areas, this is the most you've seen all winter long. So that's what I wanted to show you for the winter weather impacts. You know, this is going to cause travel troubles. There's already been school closings and delays in Texas and, uh, you know, New Mexico, Oklahoma. You folks need to be on alert for that sort of thing up into the Midwest. And this is, you know, through the next couple of days. Now let's focus on the severe weather threat for tomorrow. So basically we already talked about, you know, that round of storms. It's kind of hard to show you with these different views. So we're going to focus on the Texas part first and then walk you through Louisiana, Mississippi, and to Alabama. Now there's a ton of Gulf moisture popping in. And when you see these storms kind of looking like this on radar, that's an indicator that these are going to be some intense storms. And 
you know, there's a hail threat with this. The main threat is going to be damaging winds and tornadoes. And we're going to get into that a little bit more, but I think some strong tornadoes are going to be possible with this. That's EF2 and above. So this line of storms, once again, this is, I think, around 1, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. This is 3, 4, 5, and you can see in the afternoon and evening hours, this line of storms is pushing along that Gulf Coast, and you folks have that risk for severe weather. And this is going to continue into Mississippi, into Alabama, into the panhandle of Florida, even into the middle part of the week, you know, from Georgia up into the mid-Atlantic, you're going to have a threat for severe weather as well. So this is, let's see what time this is. This is uh, Wednesday evening. You know, so this is a couple of days from now and you've still got that line of storms still going. Now, the biggest severe weather threat is tomorrow. And this has actually been upgraded in a few areas. So now there's an enhanced risk in portions of coastal Texas. You've got the slight risk in Houston, but areas like Galveston, you've got that level three out of five. Enhanced risk. That's level three out of five for New Orleans and Mobile. Now, Lafayette is under a slight risk. Notice how close this is to the coast. Really, it's the southern edge of much of Louisiana, the southern edge of Mississippi, the southern edge of Alabama. So it's not for everyone that you've got that, you know, really great risk of severe weather. But you can have a marginal risk almost stretching to Birmingham through Jackson getting pretty close to Austin, to San Antonio, not quite there, but you're going to see thunderstorms too. And I wouldn't be surprised if one or two were on the strong side, but that greatest risk of severe weather where you could have those strong tornadoes is most likely going to be right along the coast. Also in Southeast Louisiana, New Orleans, you are probably the biggest population center, New Orleans and Mobile, you're the biggest population centers in this as well as Houston. But all these areas, you could see those strong, gusty winds. It doesn't matter which way the wind's blowing, whether it's turning or not. It can cause a lot of damage, but you've also got that threat for tornadoes, So, um, we're, which I'm going to show you right now. So this is the tornado risk, and that's a 10% hatched. And what that means, basically, is that when you have the hatched area, that's a 10% or greater probability of EF2 to EF5 tornadoes. Those are what we consider strong tornadoes within 25 miles. So basically, if you're in New Orleans tomorrow, there's a 10% risk that you could have an EF2 or EF5 or EF2 through EF5 within 25 miles of where you're at. So that's what we're looking at there. And, you know, when you take a look at the wind threat, very similar New Orleans to Mobile is kind of in that uh, area that's got the highest risk. But, you know, places like Houston up through Jackson, you can't, uh, you know, let your guard down. Now, the hail threat is not quite as great um, in the New Orleans Mobile area where we have that greatest risk of, of storms that produce tornadoes and damaging winds. But Houston, you've got a, a pretty decent chance of big hail. And that's often the case in Texas. I feel like you guys get some big hail storms. So, uh, you know, if I had covered parking along the coast there, I would have my car underneath uh, the carport or, you know, under in your garage tomorrow during the day. And so basically, there's a lot going on with this storm. And I want to make sure that you stay safe, that you're staying weather aware, and you have different ways to get alerts to your phone. Um, you know, weather apps are great. Anything you have. Also, a NOAA weather radio. If you don't have one and you're in, you know, along the Gulf Coast and the Deep South, I suggest getting one because these storms are gonna continue into the nighttime hours, into the overnight, and that can be a recipe for disaster if you don't wake up because of warnings. You wanna make sure that you are aware of what's happening and that you can go to your safe place, lowest level of your home, interior room, basement's better, but I know a lot of folks in the South don't have those, but you know, you just want as many walls between you and the outside as possible when you have weather like this and you're under a warning. So please stay alert, have a way to get those warnings, and I will continue to do my best to keep you updated. Thanks, y'all.